What's up guys? Nothing lasts forever in the NFL. Just ask the San Francisco 49ers who have been mired in mediocrity since the end of their dynasty from the 80s and early 90s. While some NFL teams are built to win today, tomorrow, and in the next five years, nearly one third of the teams don't give their fans much to be optimistic about. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present eight NFL teams facing very dark futures. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications because we post videos every single day. Every day's new videos, you should definitely subscribe. And a big shout out to the Alliance 101 for suggesting this video. Good luck with your alliance, buddy. Number eight, Green Bay Packers. Do not be fooled. Aaron Rodgers is a one-man team for the Green Bay Packers. He single-handedly got them to the playoffs in 2016. The Packers fell apart in 2017 when he broke his collarbone. Rodgers did not have an MVP season in 2018, so the Packers obviously didn't win many games. The Packers had to fire head coach Mike McCarthy, but he was not the entire problem. The team hates buying quality free agents. Their drafting is, you know, it's okay. Rodgers is now in his mid-30s and and only has so many good years left. The Chicago Bears are the new kings of the NFC North now. The Green Bay team might squeeze out one or two more years of title contention with Rodgers in his prime, but we're not really optimistic. The second he begins to slow down, the Packers will be doomed, and the dark days will hover over the Cheesehead Nation for quite some time. Number seven, Arizona Cardinals. This is going to be a very long rebuilding process in Arizona, to say the least. There's no guarantee that Josh Rosen will pan out. David Johnson has regressed a bit since a career year in 2016. Larry Fitzgerald isn't sticking around for the rest of Rosen's growth. The offensive line is atrocious. And the defense? Outside of Chandler Jones and all-pro cornerback Patrick Peterson, there isn't much to like about that unit. Keep in mind the Los Angeles Rams are set to rule the NFC West for years to come. The Seattle Seahawks showed in 2018 they are going anywhere. And oh, the San Francisco 49ers might be pretty good if Jimmy G stays healthy. Arizona doesn't have much young talent to offer outside of Rosen right now. Their three divisional foes have way brighter futures. So yeah, it's safe to say things don't look so good in the desert right now. Number six, New England Patriots. Oh, gasp. How dare we put the best American sports team of the 21st century on this list? Oh, no. Well, let us tell you that it wasn't easy, but riddle me this. What is New England's plan once Tom Brady retires? This man is now in his 40s and doesn't have many years left in him. When he's done, who's taking over? Is Bill Belichick really about to leave the Patriots? Amid rumors that he's in a bitter power struggle with Brady and owner Robert Kraft. Who will the Patriots' next home run player be when Rob Gronkowski leaves? Whether it's via retirement or a trade, it's pretty clear that Gronk is bound to leave Foxborough very soon. Contrary to what some might want to believe, Brady isn't playing forever. You don't replace a once-in-a-generation player like him. And if Belichick retires or leaves for another team down the road, good luck finding a better head coach. Or QB. The Patriots are going to keep contending with Belichick and Brady at the helm, but once one or both of these teams leave, it's safe to say this two-decades-long dynasty will suddenly end. A dark future is on the horizon in Foxborough. And I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> At least as a Jets fan, because like, come on, we'll actually have a chance in our division? That's amazing. Oh my god. I mean like, you know, depending on how everyone else is doing. I don't know. Number five, Oakland Raiders. Well, the decision to give John Gruden a 10-year contract worth a hundred million dollars doesn't really look so good. Rather than try to win now, Gruden decided to rebuild the Raiders entirely, moving out cornerstone players like pass rushing sensation Khalil Mack and wide receiver Amari Cooper. Sure, Gruden is now loaded with draft picks for 2019 and 2020, but this man was out of coaching for 10 years. Who said he'll know how quickly to adapt to the new NFL? Plus, his draft picks might not even end up being good. Owner Mark Davis fired Reggie McKenzie, the best GM this team had in years before the 2018 season ended. It's not a good look. Derek Carr hasn't shown that he's capable of leading this franchise over the long run, even if Oakland moves on from him. Who's the replacement? Did we mention that there's just, like, almost no talent on the entire roster? Raiders fans have no choice but to hope the $100 million man will figure out how to turn this thing around. And hopefully soon. If he doesn't, the future will be very, very, very dark. Darker than what it is right now when this franchise relocates to Vegas. Yikes. Number four, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Remember when we thought the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could win the NFC South in 2017? Pepperidge Farm remembers. After winning nine games in 2016, many thought that the Bucs were an up-and-coming team poised to start contending for NFC South division titles. But the Bucs came crashing down again in 2017. Winston regressed yet again and head coach Dirk Coder reportedly didn't see eye-to-eye -eye with his quarterback. 2018 marked another very disappointing year in Tampa. Uh, the defense is awful. Mike Evans is the only guy on the offense doing something. And oh, Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, and Drew Brees still reside in the NFC South. The Bucs 
Hawks have been terrible at drafting, and we're unsure about OJ Howard for now. Winston hasn't shown he could be the true leader of this franchise. The Bucks will keep on looking for new coaches to change the team. They'll probably keep wasting more draft picks too, and they'll continue to watch their three NFC South foes compete for playoff spots on an annual basis. Ah well, at least the Lightning and Rays are looking good in Tampa. Number three, Detroit Lions. Seriously, what more can the Detroit Lions do? They hired former New England Patriots defensive coordinator Matt Patricia as head coach, believing Bill Belichick's former protege would bring that winning culture into the Motor City. But nope. Matthew Stafford continues to be hot and cold. It's been that way throughout his career and it probably will never change. The defense and rushing games are respectable units, but the Lions just can't ever seem to figure out the missing pieces. Just when you think they might be ready to take a leap, they move backwards. The team last won a playoff game in 1991. Can we really trust Stafford to lead this team to the promised land? It's unlikely. We don't see enough young talent in Detroit to be excited about. With the Chicago Bears now kings of the NFC North and the Vikings looking dangerous on both sides of the ball, the Lions are in no no position to contend in their division anytime soon. That's what we call a dark future. Number two, Washington Redskins. It's been a long time since NFL fans and pundits circled the Washington Redskins as a team with a good looking future. Two playoff appearances since 2008 won't cut it. One postseason victory in the 21st century isn't that special either. Owner Dan Snyder can obviously be blamed for his way of managing the team. He gets way too involved in player personnel decisions. Rather than let the front office and coaching staff figure them out, he tries to help. The Josh Norman signing was yeah, and Alex Smith's future is now in jeopardy following a career-threatening leg injury. But just look at how the other NFC East foes have come around. The Philadelphia Eagles got their Super Bowl. The Dallas Cowboys are building an elite core around Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, and Ezekiel Elliott. What do the Redskins have to offer? Nothing. Snyder just keeps playing chess games with his fans and refuses to establish a long-term plan. Hence why attendance has dwindled in Washington. DC fans deserve better than this in the NFL world and the comic book world. Number one, the Cincinnati Bengals how the somewhat mighty have fallen? The Bengals reached the postseason five years in a row from 2011 to 2015. Even though they didn't win a playoff game in that span, everything was trending up in Ohio. But the Bengals have completely fallen apart ever since. Quarterback Andy Dalton regresses more and more each year. AJ Green remains effective, but is getting up there in age. Do you really think the Chief Bengals are going to re-sign him long-term? Owner Mike Brown stayed committed to Marvin Lewis for, hmm, I don't know, say seven years too long. What also hurt the Bengals is that they're caught in the middle. Not good enough to make the playoffs, but not bad enough to land top draft picks. This is a mediocre team with no direction. Ownership isn't committed to winning. They're committed to mediocrity. Hence why Lewis and Dalton got to stay on forever. Unless Brown changes his mind, or unless the Bengals start racking up top five draft selections over the next few years, uh, this team's fan base has nothing to get excited about. At least the Browns have a promising future, so pro football in Ohio won't be all that bad. That being said, they did just fire Marvin Lewis, so that's something to be excited about. Hopefully the Bengals finally realize that something needs to be changed. Hopefully they can like win a playoff game. I don't know. But regardless, they're fixing something up. So let's hope for the best. What other NFL teams are facing very dark futures? Join us in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and Total Pro Sports on social media. We post great content all the time. At least go check out our profiles. Go check it out. Like take a look. Be like, oh, what up Instagram? Oh, what's going on Twitter? That's cool. I'm going to go follow you. If you like our content, then follow us. If you don't, then don't follow us. Either way, we appreciate you. Just go check it out. If you like this video, make sure to like it. We really appreciate it. It takes one click right down there. If this is your first time around TPS, make sure to subscribe because we post videos every single day. Every Every day is a new video, so you should definitely subscribe. Of course, thanks so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo, and I'll see you next time. My knee.